لكن تحديت الظروف وخذتها وحدي صبورا مستعينا بالصلاة كم مرة عصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاك قلبي من أساء محرمتها وكم كرهت مصابها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sanzai, and as you know, with bro Haji, he loves his fizzy drinks So, <laughs> it's not a bro Haji video if there's no 7 or Pepsi, Miranda, or whatever it may be, bismillah It's nice by the way, if you haven't tasted it, very nice Now, for a while now, I haven't recorded videos against the pseudo Salafis Because I wanted to move away from that And I think it's been at least if not going on three to six months where I've just focused on, you know, educating the masses and, and propagating um, information or transmitting information to the public, uh, which will benefit them. But at the same time, we can't ignore the fact that we have absolute charlatans, fraudsters, and I say fraudsters loosely. Uh, what I mean is they know what they're doing, but they are preying on the vulnerable and selling a actual course or an initiative falling on from a, a kafir, you know, following those who came before them, shibran bi shibrin, you know, and then they try to, you know, justify Islamically, and they use the deen, you know, to profit basically, to, they're monetizing the deen in order to benefit themselves financially. Now, this is in relation to the Badr Club. And first of all, you know, it's an absolute mockery to the great Sahaba of Badr, where they're trying to promote getting a second wife, and becoming millionaires where they themselves are begging for donations they don't have second wives themselves so it's just an illusion whereby we have Andrew Tay who are who, who's obviously selling his own course and he Dawaman is just trying to add an Islamic flavor to it but at the end of the day he's trying to fool uh, the gullible and that's why he's that that's what this course is about really to fool the gullible 313 pound as well so imagine let, let's leave you know me speaking let's just watch uh, just a snippet of the video live up to the title we are ambassadors of the great men that came before us the badder club dealing with mental and physical health relationships finances and most importantly faith our beautiful dean you've seen the video victoria's secrets and you know laying flowers on the bed etc look bother let's focus on the name first of bother okay the Sahaba of Badr عنهم, did not enjoy the luxuries of this life. They were being persecuted. If you know history, if you know the seerah of the Prophet والسلام, if you know what they were going through, they weren't living luxury. So to use the word or the term Badr or the, you know, to connect it to Badr and then trying to sell a cause promoting luxury, you know, second wives, being millionaires and enjoying the dunya. Look, if you want to go by the companions, the lives of the companions and the Sahaba and the, you know, the, the Salaf, they weren't living lavishly, I assure you. They shunned. That's why they wrote books like Imam Ahmed wrote Kitab al-Zuhd. You know, Abdullah bin Mubarak wrote the same book. They weren't after the dunya. So to name it after Badr who sacrificed their lives for the deen of Islam when they've been persecuted 313 verse 1000 and then you're using that particular, you know, example in order to promote this sort of lifestyle, following a kafir, because that's what you, you didn't do it before, did you? You didn't do it before. You were falling on from that kafir, you think, you know what, what can I do to make some money? You know, uh, I'm, I'm leaving, you know, uh, teaching, but then I want to scrunch people from their money, 313 pounds in, in, in this particular climate. Let's use an example from the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to show you how he responded to Umar bin Khattab anhu, where he was asked a question, and you're promoting this course, second wives and millionaires and and people are struggling financially in this club, giving an impression that I could, you know, offer you some tips and some, you know, um, pointers to get you a second wife, which you don't have, from what I've been told. And I think one of the guys, I would ain't even married. So what the hell are you guys going to offer? Number two, you're not even a millionaire. As you can see, I got Sahil Bukhari. I got Sahil Bukhari. And this hadith is very, very lengthy. It's hadith number 5,100 and... 91. Ibn Khattab anhu 
came to the heights of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَرَفَعْتُ بَصْرِي فِي بَيْتِهِ I looked around his house. And for by Allah, I could not see anything in his house except for three heights. Okay? And then Umar al-Khattab speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Pray to Allah, make dua to Allah to make your followers rich. Now that's your scheme, right? You know, to get the Muslims to be millionaires and to have second wives and you know, following on from that kafir, from that kafir. And at the end of the day, this is what you're doing, following the lizard's hole. This is what you're doing, but you're trying to add some Islamic flavor. But don't worry, we've got other things in the video to show you you're an absolute idiot. Then Umar ibn Khattab anhu said, فَإِنَّ فَارِسًا وَالرُّومَ قَدْ وُسِّعَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَعُعْطُوا الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ لَا يَعْبُدُونَ اللَّهِ Umar al-Khattab says, For verily the Persians and the Romans have been made prosperous and they have been given the dunya, meaning the, the riches, the, you know, the, 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 the dunya itself. So they, and they don't worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Jalas al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa kana muttaki'an. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kind of sort of sat up and was reclining. Faqala, awa fi hada anta ya ibn al Khattab. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that these are the people that are being given their rewards in this particular world. Then when Umar bin Khattab anhu heard the answer from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِسْتَغْفِرْ لِي Ask Allah to forgive me. Okay? Ask Allah to forgive me. This wasn't the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wasn't chasing the dunya. He was not chasing the dunya. Creating this illusion and dream for the Muslims that, you know, get rich and have this luxurious life and have a second wife and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that they'll be rewarded for their good deeds in this world. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't chasing the dunya. Umar bin Khattab anhu seen how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was living. Now over the course of the two, three years that I've been recording response against Da'am and showing his technicalities, his outright disregard for the text, you know, cutting here, pacing here, not providing his context. I'm doing this video as well to show you it's an absolute fraud. Uh, just going back to uh, <laughs> the good old days. Um, Salafiyah, as we see it today, is a cult. It's an absolute cult, right? And what I'm going to demonstrate now is look at how he how hypocritical he is. Watch this. At-ta'awun to work al birri wa taqwa in piety and at-taqwa wa tanasi amma qad yaqa'u min zallatin wa hafwa and to ignore and to put aside the mistakes that have happened. Listen, if your brother made a mistake, keep working with him and just forget the mistake that he made. At tanasi. Does that make sense? Ignore it. Put it aside. Min zalla from his slip and his hafwa, his error. Man dhalladhi yaslam. The Sheikh says again, who is the one who is safe? Al muhim an takuna da'wa salafiyya ala tariq al sahabati radi Allahu anhum wa ardahum wa atba'ihim bi ihsan. What is important is that the da'wa has to be salafi, salafiyya upon the way of the sahaba and, and the tabi'een. The Prophet said, if any one of you, anyone, anyone, not necessarily a scholar, anyone, from amongst you, man ra'a sees, sees what? Munkaran, someone doing evil, someone doing wrong. The Prophet said, change it, straight away. Change it with your hand. Change it. If you can't do it with your hand, do it with your tongue. If you can't do it with your tongue, hate it in your heart. And that's the weakest of Iman. The point is, what the Prophet said, he said, upon seeing, change it straight away. He didn't say, see it, go to him, advise him, privately, da 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 da. No. No, no. If he does, if you see it and you're seeing it publicly, you are like, straight away, you advise, public, you made a mistake, my brother. And this is from the religion. Like, you're getting closer to Allah by, by this. Let me make something clear to you, that man. People hate hypocrisy. People hate it. And you're drowning in it, mate. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate now. You are drowning in it. So in, 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 basically what you're saying is, look, if it's a Salafi, right, you should go to him privately. Like, if he does something publicly, uh, go to him privately. Like. You know he's got good aqidah, you know you know he's he's upon the cult that we're upon. Don't go public because that's the backlash that he's been facing, you see, because you know he's been found out, you know, he's he's in debt and <laughs> and he's he's trying to teach people how to become millionaires when he himself is is is, is in debt. And he ain't got a second wife himself. Like imagine that, right? As I said before, you guys have a similar uh, mindset to the Yahud. You do. You know this uh, Sha'b al-Mukhtar that they, they have and you guys have this sick, safe sex syndrome. I swear you've got similarities with the Yahud. I'm telling you, I, it's clear. No doubt about it, you do. 
Uh, let, let, now what I'm going to do is this, because you made a, 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 the Brother Club obviously was an absolute shambles, right? You got called out, your finances were put to question, and you had to backtrack and then you changed it to the Brother's Club. You knew he was insensitive, but now he's just, you know, Salafi, you, know, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't refute us publicly, no, no, you should just come to me. Us Salafi brothers, we've got good aqeedah, you know, we bootlick, you know, we twist texts. We are technicalities. You know, we, we follow a, a, the godfather or the spiritual godfather of ISIS, you know, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. You know, for us, we've got special rules, you understand? You can't do to us what we do to others. Like, how dare you? Anyway, let's see how the companions uh, themselves, between themselves, when they seen something that, again, it's jihadi, they, they had disagreements, no problem, they were human, you understand? Let's go into it. As you can see in my hand, I've got Sahih Muslim. This is the shot of number we've got Sahih Muslim in my hand. Now, this is hadith number. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go into it. 1587. Okay, 1587. So, this hadith basically is about Abad bin Samit having a dispute with Muawiyah regarding sports of war. And he repeated the narration. And he kept repeating it. But I'm going to just get to the point to show you that he was in front of Muawiyah. Muawiyah is a companion, right? Abad bin Samit is a companion, right? So was Muawiyah. They're both companions. They're both companions. So, this criteria about us Salafis, you know, we are Salafis, we got good aqeedah, like, you know, come on, why were you attacking us for? لَنُحَدِّثَنَّ بِمَا سَمِعْنَا مِن رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّى وَإِنْ كَرِهَ مُعَاوِيَةِ He said, we will narrate the hadith that we heard from the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم even if Muawiyah dislikes it. Even if Muawiyah رضي الله عنه dislikes it. Okay, coming back to me now. Here you go, it's Sahih Muslim. So, Ubadi bin Samit anhu, had a dispute publicly with Muawiyah regarding the spoils of war. Okay, and he repeated the narration. Muawiyah anhu, obviously had a different interpretation towards that narration. If you want to go into it, uh, I repeated the, uh, I mentioned the hadith number, go check it. So, Ubadi bin Samit anhu, repeated it again, and then he said, We will narrate the hadith. From the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if Muawiyah dislikes it. But why didn't he do it privately? Why didn't he take Muawiyah to one side and say, you know, I'm a companion, you're a companion, right? We should do this privately. You understand? We shouldn't do this publicly because we are the companions. No, they didn't have that criteria. It's a basic tenant and a requirement of, of a Muslim, right? To speak the truth, even if it's against yourself. You understand? And we as Muslims have a perfect example in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Whoever sees something wrong should change it with his hand That exam, that hadith you quoted Which you were using to refute anyone and everyone Anyone But then you just oh, mysteriously then changed it to uh, What's it called? To the Salafis, right? You said the Salafis, we are Salafis, are Salafis Let's present another hadith Okay, so I've got my thing up I've got Sunan Abi Dawood Sunan Abi Dawood so as you can see on screen, we've got hadith number 4648 and this is Sa'id bin Zaid, one of the ten that were promised paradise, subhanAllah al Abdullah bin Zalim al-Mazini, he's the one that's narrating this and he mentions that I heard Sa'id bin Zaid, meaning the one, the ten that were promised paradise that when such and such person came to Kufa and this such and such person is Al-Mughir bin Shu'bah, okay, he was the leader and he mentions that Sa'id bin Zayd caught hold of his hand and what did he say? Subhanallah Azim. He says, Ala tara ila hadha al-zalimi fa'ashhadu ala tis'ati innahum fil jannati And he says, I bear witness to the nine people that they will go to paradise and if I testify to the tenth, I shall not be sinful. Meaning he was the one. So he mentions about the tenth of our promised paradise. I come back. So this brother club, one, is an absolute shambles. Two, it's a mockery of the great companions of brothers who sacrifice their lives, their wealth for Islam. You're talking about get, becoming millionaires and getting a second wife. Where one, you're not a millionaire yourself. And number two, you're in debt. And number three, you are begging for money for a studio. So if you're a millionaire, right, and you've got all of this wealth at your disposal, why in the hell are you begging for wealth? If I was a millionaire, let me tell you something. I wouldn't be going around asking for money. If I've got the wealth myself. But the harsh reality is, prior to this, you were going around and saying, okay, we'll refute anyone. Where did you make a distinction that all these selfies can't be refuted publicly? Where is this? Now, that man, don't think I don't know that you took out that, that recitation that you messed up with Surah Al-Baqarah. What do? What da? And then you, you added a verse in that didn't exist. I'm, I've got the video. I just don't want to put it in because you took it out. 
But it shows your arrogance. Your brother, when he said about the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said he couldn't distinguish between the kalam of the scholar and the and the, and the hadith itself. It shows you guys are juhala. Stop it. You messed up the verse, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 109. You took that part out. But they sacrificed their life and, and wealth for Islam. And you're trying to promote, you know, getting second wives and, you know, may, being millionaires when you're, you know, not a millionaire yourself. You don't have a second wife yourself. You're in debt. Uh, you were scrounging for money for your studio. Look, stop it. And your, your double standards regarding what you said many years ago and then what you said now and how you restricted to just Salafis. Look, please. What are you playing at? You understand? This video is lengthy as it is. So, I don't know what to say. You know, at times I am lost for word with your hypocrisy. This Salafi mindset, honestly, is an absolute disgrace. You are a disgrace. And your, those who are around you and the absolute muppet as well that Abu Bakr made. I, 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 I've, I've been told that he's not even married from what I've been told. So what are you going to do? What are you going to teach the people? Huh? You're not even married, mate. You ain't got no life experience in marriage, mate. That's what I've been told anyway, so let's leave it as it is. So take care of yourselves until the next video.